Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. Please remember to like the video and to make sure that you are still subscribed. I'm going to bring you uh, more Wuhan coronavirus updates, Uh, because the news seems to be pretty heavy right there. So they're building uh, an entire hospital in six days or something like that um, to treat coronavirus patients. Wuhan, China is scrambling to build a hospital in just six days to treat coronavirus patients as its health system gets overwhelmed. The Chinese city of Wuhan is rushing to build a new hospital. So, yeah. (laughs) Um, They are... um, Mobilizing all this, uh, all these excavators, builders, etc. Um, <clears throat> the city and at least nine other nine other cities have had their public transport links shut off, leaving a combined thirty million people quarantined. Uh, Wuhan's strategy mirrors Beijing's efforts to control the deadly SARS coronavirus outbreak in two thousand three. When it built a hospital in just seven days that treated one seventh of the country's patients. Um, this is pretty wild. Uh, they said they're building a 1,000 bed hospital. Uh, the hospital is to be made from prefabricated. Not prefabricated, but prefabricated. Fabricated. I can't say that word right now. Is it <clears throat> too early in the morning for my mouth to move around the word fabricated? Uh, making it quicker and cheaper to build on the outskirts of the city, People's Daily reported. Um, so apparently they did this with SARS in 2003, uh, which killed 770 people. Uh, it has spread to eight other countries, U S Japan, South Korea, Thailand, Taiwan, Singapore, Vietnam, and Saudi Arabia. Um, anyways, <clears throat> let's move on. I was talking a little bit about event 201, which is an actual thing. Uh, the Johns Hopkins Hopkins center for health security and partnership with the world economic forum and the bill and Melinda Gates foundation hosted event 201, a high level pandemic exercise. On October 18th, uh, 2019 in New York, New York, the exercise illustrated areas where public-private partnerships will be necessary during the response to a severe pandemic in order to diminish large-scale economic and societal consequences. So somehow I thought this was uh, tied into the global... um, the military games that that happened in Wuhan. They were staged in Wuhan. In recent years, the world has seen a growing number of epidemic events, amounting to approximately 200 events annually. These events are increasing, and they are disruptive of health. Okay, so this that actually happened. I don't. Um, but it was called a global pandemic exercise. <clears throat> um, so there you go. Something uh, I also heard in this <clears throat> something about this exercise that they ran. They said that up, like 65 million people could die. Uh, moving on, snakes could be the original source of the new coronavirus outbreak in China. It's from January 22nd, snakes, the Chinese crate, and Chinese cobra may be the original source of the newly discovered coronavirus that has triggered an outbreak <clears throat> of a deadly infectious respiratory illness in China this winter. Um, so apparently they can use genetic codes of the virus, uh, to, to, you know, it gives a signal about what animal it could be from. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so both SARS and MERS are classified as zoonot uh, zoonotic viral diseases, meaning the first patients who were infected acquired these viruses directly from animals. This was possible be because while an animal host, in the animal host, the virus had acquired a series of genetic mutations that allowed it to infect and multiply inside humans. Uh, so apparently what they, what they found out was that it all comes from, vat, from bats. Uh, both the SARS and the MERS originated with bats, but they think the bats transferred it to another animal and then the animal transferred it to humans. Also the case um, with this coronavirus, as far as I can tell, uh, they revealed the original source of SARS and MERS is that the masked palm civets, a mammal native to Asia and Africa, and camels respectively served as intermediate hosts between bats and humans. <clears throat> uh, so what they're thinking is that somehow this got transferred to snakes. When researchers performed a more detailed bioinformatics uh, bio analysis of the sequence of the 2019 uh, coronavirus, it suggests that this coronavirus might come from snakes. The researchers used an analysis of the protein codes favored by the new coronavirus and compared it to the protein codes from a coronavirus is found in different animal hosts like birds, snakes, marmots, hedgehogs, manis, bats, and humans. Surprisingly, they found that the protein codes in the 2019 COV and COV are most similar to those used in snakes. Snakes often hunt for bats in the wild. <clears throat> so there you go. Uh, moving on. So <clears throat> um, moving on to the more conspiratorial side of this. This is from a site called the Hal Turner Show, and I don't really know anything about this. Uh, site. <clears throat> I don't know if this guy's, I don't know, honestly. Uh, coronavirus in China, 23 million quarantined. We know the number's high. This is saying that 2.8 million are infected and 112,000 are dead. Okay, so uh, a huge number of people, apparently, multiple updates since first. So we don't know. I don't, look, I don't know if this is, this is in no way confirmed by um, other sources right now. <clears throat> um, I'm just giving you, you know, some, a different, a different news source. We don't know how true this is, but they're saying something completely different, right? Uh, so this is supposedly information from intelligent sources. Apparently this guy has intelligent sources, uh, intelligence, uh, contacts, Colleagues of mine from 15 years with the FBI um, and also Joint Terrorism Task Force who are presently inside China confirm over 2.8 million people have infected with 100,000 uh, dead so far. Okay, this is wild. Cause of death, chief cause of death, multiple organ failure, which sounds kind of along the lines of Ebola. This deviates wi wildly from the publicly reported number of 830 inf infected and 25 deaths. A message from a frontline doc in Wuhan has confirmed the reason for the stopped growing number of infected is because the hospitals have run out of virus test kits. The thousands of dead are being taken directly to incinerators, no funeral, no burial, just burned. Intel is getting its actual death counts directly from the incinerator operators. Okay. Uh, we don't know this, I, you know, whatever. This guy could just be saying anything. So here's some pictures of people like lying on the ground. I actually saw this video already earlier. This guy just fell over and there were people. So apparently people are just like dropping, dropping on the ground from this disease. Uh, again, I don't know if this, these could be pictures from anywhere or anything or any other situation we don't know that this is necessarily the truth. <clears throat> but anyways, you know, I'll link this if you guys want to look at it. If anybody else can confirm, can confirm that any of this is true, I'd be interested. 
This this is also confirmed though that the vi- virus is elsewhere: Australia, Canada, Colombia, England, India, Malaysia, Nepal, Northern Ireland, Philippines, Saudi Arabia, uh, South Korea, uh, United States. Somebody confirmed in Los Angeles or quarantined in Los Angeles, Texas, Oakland, Cookville, Tennessee, Vietnam. Okay. So, you know, if you want to if you want to crank up the the panic, uh check that out, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if this is um we don't know if this is true waiting for a confirmation, okay? Um Lastly, I wanted to read this from Truth Out. Uh this is our last decade to get climate change right or <clears throat> to get climate right and, you know, obviously this person might be way behind the curve. Um this may be the last decade of normalcy before climate change um, rears uh, its ugly head or starts displaying its sense of humor on humans. This is from Kelsey Hawkins Johnson, uh, January 18th, 2020. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warned in October 2018 that we have 12 years to keep global temperatures incre- uh, temperatures. Temperature increases at 1.5 degrees Celsius or less. Now we have more like 10 years we have this decade. In the first weeks of 2020, we've already witnessed mass evacuations and the death of over a billion animals in Australia due to raging bushfires, a devastating flood that took the lives of 67 people, and rising in the already sinking city of Jakarta and the loss of power in homes after back-to-back earthquakes rocked Puerto Rico, which has yet to recover from the devastating Hurricane Maria. <clears throat> Annual international climate negotiations connect world leaders and civil society groups from developed and developing countries alike to address the crisis. Yet these negotiations have often been exercises in disconnection more than anything else. When I attended my first United Nations climate conference in Poland's coal capital, excuse me, uh, Katowice, or Katowice, I don't know how they pronounce it, in 2018, the disconnect between the people most responsible for the crisis and the people most vulnerable to to it was as visible as the smoke coming from the plants a few meters from the venue. <clears throat> Big oil seemed to have more voice at the conference than indigenous communities, civil society groups promoting justice, and community action were excluded from many spaces at the talks altogether. It's no wonder that human rights and just uh, climate finance got neglected at the conference. Last year's climate gatherings, COP25 in Madrid, the disconnect was still there and as visible as ever. It's, it was seen most dramatically in the armed security removing and blocking more than 100 climate activists, mainly indigenous and youth, from entering COP25 after a peaceful protest. 350.org called it an unprecedented crackdown on dissent. It was also seen in the party's lack of agreement on how to proceed with international carbon markets, which could lead to major rollbacks and progress toward reducing emissions. Privatized carbon markets are still on the table and will be discussed further uh, later this year in Glasgow, Scotland. Even UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called the result of COP25 a disappointment. The international community has lost an important opportunity to show <clears throat> increased ambition on mitigation, adoption, and finance to tackle the climate crisis, he said. It wasn't just the lost opportunity to increase ambition that made the conference a disappointment. Just as bad, wealthy polluters like the United States refused to provide any assistance to more vulnerable countries impacted by pollution from developed countries. How many years will it take for world leaders to prioritize the world's climate impact of populations over its fossil fuel dependent corporations? We cannot wait until the end of the decade, that's for sure. Um, <clears throat> yes. A good rule of thumb might be to bar fossil fuel companies, uh, major corporations, also barring billionaires from running for president or, you know, uh, the people at Davos are not going to listen to Greta Thunberg. They're not going to listen to Extinction Rebellion. Um, They might listen and, and, and give lip service, but they're not going to, they're not going to do anything meaningful. I mean, they basically have to take themselves out of the global economic equation in order for them to do anything meaningful. And are they going to do that? Probably not. The prior host, uh, uh, if COP25 had stayed in Chile, the prior host before a popular uprising there made it 
posting and practical, world leaders would have gotten to see that market schemes like carbon offsets and Article 6 won't save anyone. We already knew this. They would instead have seen the huge civil backlash to the neoliberal economic system that boosts corporate profits over people's lives. Maybe they should hold the next one in France. Ooh. They would have seen a student-led eco-feminist movement in Chile demanding the overthrow of a system that pr privatizes natural resources and social services, which exacerbate the climate crisis and social inequality. The movement in Chile is not too different from the student-led movements in the U.S. and all around the world calling for climate j justice. That's why the next U.N. climate talk in December COP26 should begin the decade with inclusive and effective climate action. That means world leaders need to be listening to the masses and their movements, including civil society in the negotiation room. And excluding polluters and other profiteers off the loss of lives and livelihoods from the conference altogether. This is our last decade to get it right. So there you go. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.